Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in mid Michigan. And I'm really excited to be outside today. It's a beautiful day. It's like in the mid seventies, it's partly cloudy. Tomorrow it's going to be in the sixties and potentially rain. So what I really wanna to do today is uh, change out my limelights from the big urns near the fountain over here and transplant them out into the garden. Now, I do wanna show you those garden plants that I got from Great Garden Plants, but I think we might do that in the next garden video because I really need to get to this first. I wanna get them planted out and it's such perfect weather. You know, when you have the weather, you have to take advantage of it. Um, definitely look for overcast days, days when rain is in the forecast and that's exactly what we've got. So I think I'm gonna go turn the fountain off because it might splash on me a little bit as we work in this area. And then we will dig in and start cutting these um, limelights out of these pots. All right, let's get going. So today you might notice I'm wearing some sleeves. I'm trying out these sleeves from Farmer's Defense. They sent these out to me to try and I thought this would be the perfect video for them because I'm going to be digging. I wanna protect my arms from you know all of the foliage as we do that and um, definitely where we're going to be planting also. It's not sponsored, it's not a sponsored video or anything. I don't even really have a opinion on these yet. I'm just starting to try them out. What they say is that they have a UPF in them to protect you from the sun and that they also protect you from scratching. I wish kind of that they had built in mosquito protection as well for me in Michigan, but <laughs> I guess that's not possible. So I'm just gonna cut around this limelight using uh, my Root Slayer shovel. It has a really nice cutting edge on it, which makes it quite convenient for doing this. And I find I can get a little bit more leverage with this than I can with just my Hori Hori knife when I'm trying to work with shrubs that might have good root systems. And I don't know, these have only been in this pot for like a couple months maybe, so they might not be very rooted in. And hydrangeas do tend to have fairly shallow roots, but these were really large. Um, these were really large plants to start with, so they had really large root balls. I don't think it's gonna be an issue getting them out though. I wanna leave these potato vines in because I wanna replant these pots with something for fall after I get these out. Maybe not today, but I definitely would like to get something in them that's kind of more for fall and winter. All right, there we go. That looks good. Let's get the other one out as well. And then we'll take these over to a spot for planting. I'm taking these little strange terracotta things out. These are supposed to be like Oyas, which you fill up with water. I bought them for when I went on vacation and I'm not sure they were large enough to do anything, but you know, with my sister watering and everything, I don't really know because everything was fine when I came back. So either they helped or it was just my sister's watering that did the trick. Now these limelights can get rather large, so we're gonna be putting them on the west side of the house. I wanna get some additional height over there and some color, some blooms, because I have a lot of green on that side. And I need something that can take the drought and also the heat of the end of the day sun. And I think these will be okay. Um, I'm just in zone 5B, so if I was in like zone 7 or 8 or 9, it might be not such a great idea because the blooms might fry and uh, not look very good, but I think here it's going to be okay. And if it's not, I'll just move them because that's how I do it. All right, awesome. Let's take these limelights over to their new spot. 
So this is the west side of the house. And as you can see, we don't have a lot of height in this garden. Now I did have a lilac that was right over here, actually a couple of them that I took out a couple years ago. And since then I've been trying to decide what I wanna plant here because I don't want a, something like what happened before because it got too tall, went up over the roof. It was really hard to control. So we had to take it all the way out. So I'm thinking these limelights are going to be perfect because they can get like 10 to 12 feet tall. And, um, it's, it's probably going to be able to stay under the roof line here in our zone. I don't think they will get too much bigger. Um, so if I plant one over here, I have a PG hydrangea that's in here. And from what I heard about PGs, they are very weak. Now I planted this one as a cutting and I thought it would be great if I didn't have anything else, but I always plant things and keep in mind that if I find something that I like better or that might work better in that area, that I'm always willing to replace them. So I'm gonna dig that one out and we'll replace that with the limelight. And then as we come down here, I also have another hydrangea cutting that you can even hardly see down here because this is in the sea of geranium. So it's just peeking up above. You can see the shiny leaves right here. And that is a quick fire hydrangea that I created from a cutting. That's gonna take a while to get much bigger. And so I'm gonna dig that one out as well, but I am going to save that one because um, that one's a good size and it's a really nice shrub. And so I wanna to continue to have it um, grow on and be able to use it within the garden, maybe someplace else. All right, well, we'll start down here and see if we can get this one in. Here we go. Now, there's lots of lily of the valley in this garden bed, which I don't care for. And also while I'm at it back here, I'm gonna take this euphorbia out, which probably self-seeded. But my whole hope with these hydrangeas is to be able to give some additional height and interest. And I did add the viburnum bush to this garden bed just down here to the side, which will provide, oh, about eight feet tall and will bloom in the springtime. But these hydrangeas obviously will bloom later in the summer and will provide this nice color in the fall. Move this out of the way just a little bit here. So let's get this PG hydrangea also dug out. And I'm going to be careful to try to plant this uh, in a situation where it's out from the root line. So right about where this PG hydrangea has been planted should be the perfect spot still. But this limelight hydrangea definitely has a really large root ball. So I'm going to need to do a little more digging, I think. Now, the other th reason why I think this hydrangea will be pretty good over here is that panicle hydrangeas tend to do pretty well, even in kind of dry soil. And this definitely dries out. It's very well drained. So I'm hoping these will do all right. Lilacs, or excuse me, these hydrangeas or the limelights definitely have very big blooms. So I'm hoping it's not an issue most of my panicle hydrangeas do great even during drought. The soil right now is not very moist.
And I'm not sure which way I want to plant this, so I want to take a good look at it. I think that's pretty good. I think it adds quite a bit of height to the garden. Now, as I am putting this in, I want to lift it just a little bit higher. So I'm going to put a little bit of soil back in the hole because I don't want to bury it. And I'm definitely going to need to water this in really well just because the soil does feel fairly dry over here. I want to make sure as I'm packing this soil in that this is really standing nice and upright. And making sure to pack the soil down in between the root ball and the edges of the hole. All right, I think that looks great. Let's get it watered in now. And one of the other things that I'm going to have to keep an eye on with these is the deer. So I'll definitely have to spray these because the deer do come through here. Um, we get a lot of deer in the garden. Somebody actually commented about the Wayback Garden and how nice it would be if I had the ability to open up my back garden to the space that was in the Wayback, but I just don't. If I did, I would be stuck with the deer eating it pretty much everything. We literally get herds of deer coming through here. Pretty much on a daily basis. So I'm just gonna really soak this extra good because of the fact that I can tell that the soil is dry. And I really want to help the soil settle in around the roots of this. This is one of the type of panicle hydrangeas that I'm also going to cut the blooms off of when it comes time in the winter. Because while they look really pretty right now and could provide nice winter interest, once it starts getting ready to snow or when it rains and freezes to ice, the panicles can actually get really, really weighed down even more so than it does with rain. And then it can just simply snap the branches off, which is no good for the whole shrub, obviously. All right, I think that'll do it. Let's get the other one planted. You won't hear me say this very often about planting, but I'm actually kind of nervous about planting this one because this is where the lilac roots are and I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to have enough space to dig for this root ball. So I'm really crossing my fingers that this works, you guys. First, we're going to take out this quick fire though. And I'm probably going to ruin quite a few of the geraniums that are around it, but it's okay because these are a spreading geranium and they will find their way right back. I'm 
So this has been in here for about two years. This being its second year, and it looks like it's developed a nice set of healthy roots, but it definitely needs some more time to grow on. That's pretty nice for a cutting, isn't it? All right, we'll set that one aside. Let's get this whole dug. Sometimes it sounds like I'm hitting roots or that I'm hitting a rock and uh, it can actually be like hard pan that's about, oh, say a foot down in the soil. So I have to test it out whenever I hear that noise to see what exactly it is that I'm coming across. Now I think this is the way that I'm gonna want it to face. But again, I always like to double check and look. Oh yeah, that's gonna look nice there. I think that's gonna be perfect. Um, I'm definitely going to try to limb these up and make them into sort of tree forms over time. I think that'll be really nice. I'm trying to not, not to knock the blooms off right now because I really want to enjoy them for, you know, another month or two. Probably at least two more months. I have a little bit of wood chips that are left over from another project that I did. So I'm gonna use those to top dress these. The nice thing about wood chips is that these will continue to help break down and add organic matter to the soil, but it's not going to, you know, do anything like a fertilizer would to spur on new growth at the end of the season. So I'm just adding a couple of inches. I know you can't see down in here, but I'll give you a shot after I'm done. Just a couple inches of it around the base of the plant, making sure that the crown of the plant isn't buried. So here's what that looks like. Nice and rich brown organic material for the top of it. Let's get it watered in. I actually had forgotten that I have this mulch. So now that I remembered, I'm gonna add some to the other hydrangea as well, of course. Now, some people say that pink and yellow don't go good in the garden, but I think that they do. Just look at how this looks next to that helenium. It's beautiful, bright colors. There's even some flowers that have pink and yellow in them. Again, I'm really gonna soak this one because the soil is so dry. But 
tomorrow we should get that nice rain so hopefully that will help these along and the nice cool weather as well is perfect uh, to protect the plants from any heat kind of shock or anything like that and the roots will continue to grow on. All right, let's throw some mulch on the other one before we finish. I love it. This looks so fantastic. And uh, you guys, we're going to go plant the Wygela in the front garden bed too because we have just a little bit more time. So let's get that done. All right, I chose this Wygela, which is a spilled wine Wygela for the end down here because it should get about two feet by two feet wide. So I think it would look really nice on the end. And I love that it has the burgundy colored foliage because that's going to add some additional color to this bed, even when things are not in bloom. That's something that I let people know a lot about things that I've learned during gardening is how important foliage is to the garden, what it really adds, especially when things are out of flower. Now it's interesting because this garden bed, which is out in the middle of the front garden in the sun, is completely wet. And it's not because I watered it. It's just held on to moisture because it's such heavy clay. Now I have a little bit of a another plant that's kind of planted itself as a volunteer in this container and that is the Angelina sedum. And I think I'm gonna let it ride along. I kind of like the contrast of it with the Wygela. And it's pretty easy to pull out if I change my mind. It's also not very aggressive in my experience with it so far in terms of its growth. So it's not like a ground cover that's going to take over my garden or something. Now Wygela are pretty deer resistant, at least that has been my experience so far. Hopefully they continue to be for me. I am going to though get the hose out and even though that soil was nice and moist, I'm still going to water this in because the plant itself that was in the pot was not moist, it was dry. So I don't want it to, you know, have some transplant shock. So we're gonna get this soil moist and uh, finish it up. Thank you to all of you for providing some feedback on the junipers. Several of you commented that you have tied in the branches on junipers before because I have some that are kind of leaning to the side on these new blue arrow junipers that I planted. So um, I may try that this fall. It seemed to be a more common response than saying to clip them off. Um, but I also read an extension article that talked about the use of pruning for it. So um, I'm still continuing to look at it. I just haven't uh, made up my mind which direction I'm going to go. All right, well, that should do it because, like I said, tomorrow it's going to rain. So I don't want to overwater the Wygela because it definitely doesn't like that. All right, so you can kind of see how that looks with this new garden bed here, which I think is nice. Our oak leaf hydrangea is doing great. We still have some nice new leaves coming on in there. So that is happy. And I think that's just a really nice addition to the bed. And as we turn to walk this way and take a look at what we did over here, you can already see the hydrangeas from afar and then peeking out over the other foliage. So I'm really excited that we will have 
three plants in this garden bed between these hydrangeas and the viburnum that is next to the air conditioning unit that will start to provide a great deal more height in this garden bed and much more interest, I think. And I love how they will soften the brick wall because I don't like looking at the expanse of that either. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed spending some time out in the garden with me and doing some fall transplanting. It's been a wonderful way to check a couple more things off of my list. Well, we'll see you next time. In the meantime, enjoy gardening. Bye.